The fact is, is that if Scotty's castle was not already located in what was then Death Valley National Monument, this area could probably be a national park on its own. When you look at the history, not only the history with the Johnsons and Death Valley Scotty, but the Native American history, when you look at the geology and the scenery here, when you look at the incredible work that was done to build this castle and the other buildings here, it is certainly one of the jewels of Death Valley. And being that Death Valley is the largest national park in the lower 48 states, it certainly has its share of jewels. Most people who have been to Scotty's Castle know the basic history of Scotty's Castle, the, the relationship between uh, Walter Scott, Death Valley Scotty, and Albert Johnson and Bessie Johnson. But when we start to peel that back and we look a little deeper, we see that there's a much more complex history that's there. First, you have Scotty and his desire to be recognized and also live well. And you have Albert Johnson, who never really wanted to work in the insurance business and only did so because of a terrible train accident in which his father was killed and his back was broken. He originally trained to be a mining engineer. And I think if that accident had not happened, Albert Johnson would have already been out here in the West working in the mining industry. And then you had his wife, Bessie Johnson, who did not see any reason to have to fit into that normal female stereotype of the time. She loved to minister the gospel and she had done it on the radio in Chicago, which is not something that, uh, that women normally did at that time. And as they came out to Death Valley and as Death Valley drew them out here, they were able to, to fit into these into these visions that they had for their life that would not have been available to them if they had been anywhere else. Albert Johnson fell in love with the desert and enjoyed his time out here with Walter Scott. He was able to relax. He was able to unwind from the stresses of living in the big city and decided that he wanted to live out here more permanently. So he invited his wife to come out and to see Death Valley and to think about uh, living here. And he brought her out and brought her to this uh, north end of Death Valley and showed her the spot. And she looked at the, the shack and tent cabin that were here and she said, well, if you want me to live here, you're gonna have to build me a proper house. And the odyssey began. First deciding where to build and then deciding how to build how to get all of the things you need to build a house, not just a house, but what turned into Scotty's Castle, out here into the middle of nowhere. And doing all of that, all of the incredible engineering feats that were done, they had a solar hot water heater here. They used a Pelton water wheel to, to generate electricity. They were alternative before alternative was a word. They did so many great things out here. The theme of people moving west sometimes is talked about as, you know, just an economic thing, that people moved west to get rich. But really, I think people moved west so that they could live the lives that they wanted to live. And I think that Walter Scott and Albert Johnson and Bessie Johnson got to do that here. The Scotty's Castle Historic District is a federally protected site. It's preserved by the National Park Service and Death Valley National Park staff. It's been six years since the flood of 2015, which caused devastating damage to the infrastructure and buildings at Scotty's Castle. Because of the cultural and historical significance of the site and the federal laws that protect it, Intensive efforts to preserve structures, collections, and other significant features are ongoing. 
It's going to be a little while yet before we reopen, but in the meantime, exhibited collections including silver, firearms, and many curtains have undergone necessary conservation treatment. There's going to be even more work to do. Besides the work we've already done on the Chimes Tower and the theater organ, there's many things that still need to be done and things that will be, need to be done in the future. And now, with the results of the fire that destroyed what was the garage building, also known as the Visitor Center, there's going to be even more work to do. And we hope that you'll help support Death Valley National Park by making a donation to the Death Valley Natural History Association at dvnha.org. The reason why we are doing all the work that we are doing to save Scotty's Castle and to preserve this place is because of its uniqueness, not only its uniqueness within a national park, but also the uniqueness in how it was built. You have to view Scotty's Castle in its totality. It's not just the building. It's not just the artifacts. It's not just the story. It's all of them together. The building is the body. The artifacts are the heart. And the story is the soul. And if you don't have all of it together, then it wouldn't be worth saving. And we have all those three things here. And I don't think that it's not only worth saving, I think it demands being saved.